This conference will now be recorded. I'd like to call the January 6th meeting of the Harbor Advisory Committee to order. Can I have the roll call, please? Here. Mo. Lewis. Here. Wilson. Here. Costellic. Here. Lamar. Here. Luther. Here. Larry Here. Uh, is there any modifications to the agenda? If not, I have a motion to approve it. Okay. Spark. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Uh, did you have a chance to review the meeting minutes from November, December 2nd? I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Second. I have a correction. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> I read them. <laughs> I read them. I thought they were fine. Um, I wasn't here. So. <laughs> uh, there was a lot of work done. Cassie already caught it with me. We fixed it. There's one correction in it. So. What is that? What? Uh, first page. A lot of work has been done to fix the docks this fall once the docks were removed. It's actually once the boats were removed. It's a thing. <laughs> yeah, I'll thing. make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Prove I was here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the video is for. <laughs> um, Going to move into business. Um, Going to go into the operations updates and look at those standard operating procedures we've been working on. Um, Cassie called around to all the other ones run by cities and had come up with the list that was included in your packet as far as comped boats. Um, See, I don't know if that popped up on my, Is on my packet. I want to read it. I got it. Where's wait for what? Um, Traverse City said they accommodate two vehicles or vessels. One of them is the sheriff's boat. The other one is the city fire department. And for much for the same reasons that we like to have them in the marina, um, immediate response, safety, everything else. They they do work with them. They don't go into regular slips. Thanks. They kind of have what they call bonus slips. So they're either broadside dockage or situations like that it is one of the things that i'm looking at is possibly shifting or moving them around to different spots as needed or whatever with them that's one of the things that we do have in that standard operating procedure um i know there was some questions from rachel as far as does the youth get to be above the law enforcement was one question that she had as far as us kicking kicking you to the curb or saying you have to pay for your slip or whatever, she thought law enforcement should be above the youth. And I had the youth first just because we were going to make them pay for their slips with sweat equity. Um, so that was one thing. Um, Harbor Springs, the only boat they comp is the police department, Marine boat. Uh, Petoskey only allows the DNR open pontoon boat. I called Petoskey. And, and said the same thing? They said there was a patrol boat, but I didn't know what kind it was. Yeah, they said it's a DNR boat is what they have. Um, Escanaba said that they allow law enforcement, government agencies, free dockage, includes all the scientific research via, uh, vessels, and um, they do give the Sea Scouts you slip it no charge also they're doing the same thing we're doing yes Escanaba is pretty close to what we're doing so what's there always the other side of that is how much room do they have how right many spaces do they have and that i see, don't for us in the past hasn't been a problem but right their marine is pretty small Escanaba. yeah but they might not have a lot of they might not have like or they might not have 16 years research vessels either i don't they, know. they don't have a NOAA facility mm -hmm. over here yeah so yeah i don't maybe know. get uh, i mean i'm just speaking off the cuff but maybe they get like one two research vessels i mean we get i think i got and we can get quite the circulation in a busy 
non-COVID research season. Right, you know, and that's right now, I think we've got two research boats in there. We've got, and that's not even counting the NOAA boats. That's just the college research boats that are in. I should have fish and wildlife. Fish and wildlife. And that's, everybody else has got one or two law enforcement. I got four or five. It's like. National Oceanographic, there's research, there's that boat. There's two fish and wildlife vessels. Are they now they're permanently docked here? Well, they no, but they come, but they don't pay dockage when they come. I think when they do it yeah. as if you're here for a a seasonal situation, yeah, yeah. then That's you get free. You could about. offer the free dock. Like, yeah, I mean, boat. like two days. I, yeah, I mean, the that's... guys who come and go, we, they're they're transients. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we should charge for them. That's I mean, it's a little different. Yeah, I don't know. It's a thought. I don't know what. Are fish and wildlife leaving though too? Did I hear? Yeah, but there are other boats. See, the sturgeon comes in. I'm talking about the ones that come in, not the guys that are here. Okay. I'm talking about the the huge ones in the river. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. We we don't never charge them, have we? I don't. I don't think anybody has ever addressed that broadside river dockage ever. Um, no. Whose jurisdiction is it? Mine. Ours, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Is it part of the marina or just part? It's actually considered part of the marina. Okay. okay. Yeah, it is. Because hmm. I mean, their alternative is they could say, well, we're not going to pay your fee, and they could go park in front of NOAA, technically. Mm -hmm. Or they could park in front of. Well, so there are some parts of the river. Salt park. They could do what the fishermen do. Charge them more to open the bridge. Yeah, just let them do it. The riverfront there yeah. are fine. Some of it's charging more to open the bridge. Some of it's private. Yeah. Bridge. Or bridge lift fee. <laughs> yeah. You run your PayPal account, as you just tap it as you go through the mm -hmm. bridge. So, you know, what are you thinking? Because you're the one who's going to enforce all this. Yeah, because I got unlimited time to do this. Um, again, I go back to what we did with that standard operating procedure is we can still look at offering and doing kind of like we have been doing until it becomes an issue. And when it becomes an issue, I can't give up that many slips. You know, it's just, it's, yeah, and I think that's why Traverse City and Pataya, they have no slips. I mean, they're booked. They're booked solid. Over there. And I don't know how much research is going on. I mean, this is, I don't know, but like how many research vessels are they really having coming on through mm -hmm. Traverse? I mean, you're also talking about multiple. Oh, you mean in Petoskey now? That whole area. I'm I mean, there all the time. It's, and all, no. it's all pleasure boats. Yeah. Yeah. It's all pretty so, much. I mean, they're, I mean, in law enforcement, there are some yeah. law enforcement boats in there. So, I think, but I'm sure they don't charge them because when I called, they got real quiet about, you know, <laughs> I don't think they want anybody to know that there was free dockage for yeah. law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Well, the Coast Guard station's right there in the bay, though, in Traverse City also. Yeah. And they have their own docks there. Yeah, right. yeah I mean, that's a little... They don't have dock. They, you know, right. yeah. they don't have a... They've got more than one there. I'm surprised that... We have one. The yeah. oh, what are police we departments not with station. the Coast Guard at their station. Well, they're just they're they're main docks, so fishing, it's separate from everything else. Oh, the cur courtesy docks? It could, I mean, I, I was thinking like, I, I, I understand the, I want to say the PR vert why, but like, I can understand the partnership of working with those entities and allowing them, you know, hey, you know, you do this and therefore we'll help you out kind of thing. Like, I get that, but. I mean, yeah, I mean, we are starting to see our slips fill up more and more. You know, it's great that we provide that for those who also provide services to our community, but. And I guess. Those boats just kind of sit there <laughs> quite a long time taking up space and that's that's fine, but like, I don't know. But still, what would you say is about $16,000? $16,000 in docks. Twenty-four. I mean, could we. As far as improvements for the marina and things like well, that. Well, and oh. what my thought was is law enforcement, um, if if it got to the point where I needed those slips because we were going to sell them, I was going to move some of the law enforcement to those courtesy docks that we're talking about um, just because two things. Number one, that's quick access for them. Yeah. They park down by that flag and jump in their boat and they're gone. Right now, they got to actually run down to the docks yeah. and get in and go. Yeah. That would get them out of here quicker for a situation out there. Yeah, because theoretically, they could be on a trailer and get in the water faster than they could be going on all the way out on the docks. I mean, it's theoretically. But man, being yeah. way out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but courtesy docks, 
although I don't know I don't know the safety factor either leaving it there but that's up to that's up to law enforcement right see and that's I think that's that's some of the yeah. the things that we just need to look at is sheriff's boat they need to be there right away the DNR boat they need to be there right away fish and wildlife can probably pull theirs in and take it out if it got to the point where I said hey I need your slip yeah well they do they don't I don't think they do they leave their they do leave it they there. do leave it there some okay because but they will pull it and take it they'll pull it and they'll go down and but their slip is always kind of yeah, I'm talking more about the the trans the ones that come for yeah a week or two but I you know and that's I don't know if they've ever paid you know. They, they kind of have that's their slip and that's when they come to alpena they use that one. Well, i mean in the rivers one because they used to charge for the river i know mm -hmm. i don't think we charged the tanner to be over on his well, i know but i think it got waived is what i'm saying a long time ago okay because there were people like when a yacht came in and couldn't mm -hmm. come into the marina they put them over over there and they did i know they got charged it wasn't free right it's not free to be on that dock line there um and that's yeah you know we've got I mean, a couple a few. vessels and stuff like that that have just been pulling up there and as far as i know they don't pay seasonal so the people you talk to at the dnr and i, I guess the local sheriff boat that's I, I, you know that's different but the dnr and fish and wildlife can can you talk to is it a discussion to have with them saying hey we're trying to do all these improvements to the marina mm -hmm. and we're giving you these freebies but that's really detrimental to the marina is there any way what do you think about and having some sort of fee to help us maintain this marina which would include your dock space and whatnot right they say i mean you can talk to them about it and that was i actually broached that subject even with coast guard coast guard said you know if we got to pay for our dock we have to pay for our dock we don't have a problem with that so we're going to build them they they were willing to do it if we ever got to that point and that's what and i guess that was my thought is right now we can maybe continue on until i get to the point where i i need your space you're either going to pay for it or right but i was thinking the other the other part of that too is that they're they're pulling up the dock and pulling on the dock and right. depreciating the dock mm -hmm. so that so to pay for that that means whoever else all those other people have to pay for it right right so maybe they should i guess that's my thought so not to them make a donation or some sort of uh, seasonal fee even though the slips fee, we just still need a thousand dollars to maintain the back, or I don't know, some fee or something. See what they say. You know, I don't think it's unreasonable right. sense because they're putting wear and tear on. The... And then do we, do we pursue the Jeff too? I mean uh, Noah. I mean I didn't. Um... Elf kept thinking that it's in their budget. Well, and that was yeah. I was waiting until we kind of made a decision what we wanted to do here before, and that's a lot of these I haven't approached yet, just because at this point in time, figure out what it is. Right. We we want to figure out what the whole procedure is going to yeah. be. I wonder if so, like the city marina in Traverse City has broadside dockage along the break wall mm -hmm. on the outside. Yep. So if you came off the Prentice Street side or quicker access to be able to drive right out there mm -hmm. for any one of those boats being that it's the state and the federal government i wonder if it would be worth looking at, at the federal government or state government would do a grant to put a broadside dock down the break wall in that corner by prentice street and if they would all be willing to say hey we'll we'll throw five years worth of dockage at it mm -hmm. for a match for the grant and then you put the dock there and then they're rent free beyond that right you increase your dockage mm -hmm. solve the problem and and that's what i'm hoping is like for the law enforcement long term we we find them an actual home on the marina mm -hmm. and that was my thought is with this grant is possibly giving two possibly three of them getting a dock further down by the flagpole and that's the my only thought is they fly in and raid on there and go out they are close they're not trying to get over to down prentice street or something like well, that yeah, prentice street could be depending on the night yep depending on the night could be a, a busy spot if they flew right in and went right down by the flagpole they could pull straight in there yeah they're going to jack up parking a little bit but pull in there 
jump off, get on that, and go. So that was my thought is. That'd be the easiest. Maybe those courtesy docks become our law enforcement launches um, at that point in time. So what would you like to accomplish in this meeting on this discussion? <laughs> <laughs> I would like you guys to tell me if you liked what we did in the last standard operating procedure when you guys read it. And then, because you guys wanted me to report back what I found from these other communi communities and stuff like that. I, I just, again, we're, we're trying to work through, do we want all these places to be comped or, and, and do all of that? Do we want to look at some kind of sweat equity for the youth program so that they realize there is a lot of work and a lot of money that goes into maintaining a marina? So as you grow older, yeah, expect you, you're going to have to get a bill. I, I think when in there when you said about the sweat exit for the youth, I don't, I don't think that, you know that's not a problem. Yeah, I mean, okay. for me that's like a, such an easy sale. Yeah, so I don't think that's an issue. So mm -hmm. now we're down. I think there are big, no problem there. But I think what about the what was the what did it what did it say? I guess I can't remember the standing operating procedure. About, a long time ago. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I can try to remember what I, exactly we just. I guess my immediate feeling or my thoughts about it. In general, is like, yeah, I kind of agree with Steve. Whereas, you know, when we're talking about the youth sailing program, like a sweat equity totally makes sense to me. You know, if the DNR is like, I have a feeling that when we do approach them, even if we were like, hey, you know, even if it's just like, instead of full comp, it's a discount or whatever, someone's going to do the whole, oh, well, we bring a lot of what I'm, researchers or whatever. Yeah, what I'm hearing is we buy gas from you. Yeah. And I guess my thing, my opinion is like, that's, I mean, if that's their thing, we don't, our gas is not our moneymaker, my understanding, and they can drive to Harrisville all they want to go get the gas. And then mm -hmm. my opinion is if any of the research entities come up here and are like, oh, but our researchers bring money to your community. I was that researcher. We sit in the NOAA facility for free. And we go to Latitudes and they spend about 250 on gin and tonics and a hot dog. Like they're not exactly like bringing thousands of dollars of visiting income, mm -hmm. I guess is my opinion. And as we talked about before, these government entities, <clears throat> excuse report. me, that dockage is nothing to them. Yeah. You know, the amount of money. And if it really is, then they'll say it really is. I don't know. I would think they would say it really is. But I guess my opinion is like, yeah, like the local, like the sheriffs, the fire, like those local enforcement agencies mm -hmm. make the most sense to be, okay, like I can understand copying them because they provide a local service and such. And I would say like, as you scale up to like the state and the federal and military, then I would probably say maybe that's more where it's like, even if that's tiered, I don't know. You know, if your state, it's 75% discount. If you're federal, it's 25, I don't know, but. Go ahead and spend my tax dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's spending here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll reinvest it. Some of it back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But so when do you want this settled by? I mean, like not tonight, but I mean, what? When? Uh, well, and that's because we got a lot. I mean, not lots of time, but you. That's what. That's why we're talking about it right, right. now. Right. Right. Because then by by spring, by the time right. I'm starting well, to mail. Say bills. by March, you know, or April, yeah. Right. March would probably be better. Because, Tell me when to scroll. I mean, would you want it but I mean, I guess from us, what would you like to see the best? Just grandfather it all in, or do you want us like identifying each entity and going, they they I mean, would you want to see like a tier established by us? Like and that's you're a local governmental agency, this is your discount. If you're a state level agency, this is your I mean, are you thinking that or are you thinking like more like case by case? Well, and what I was looking at is the youth the youth boats are gonna have to agree to yeah. Yeah. the sweat equity and both the Alpina Sailing and the Boy Scouts or Sea Scouts have both agreed to that. They are yeah. more than willing to to do that to get through this. Um Law enforcement, we want to be able to accommodate them as much as possible. Those are the three that we have in here right now. DNR, Sheriff, Coast Guard, they're all in here right now. We'd like to continue to accommodate them as much as possible. My thought is, is if we ever get to the point where we're going to cheer them, they're going to bump to the courtesy. Here, yeah. you know, um, and then no one. And it's the, I think where we're, we're having problems is there's a couple of them here. Number one, the other entities is 
um, the governmental fisheries divisions, national fish and wild, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, all of them. Do we continue to comp them, or do do we expect them to pay? I mean, uh, educational institutions, U of M, all of them. What is the thought? Are they going to pay? You know, that's that's what we're trying to figure out. NOAA, are they going to pay? You know, NOAA likes to tell me they buy they buy the fuel from them, and they do. They do buy the fuel. Lady Michigan buys our fuel. She does not. No. So you're down to this to research. It's one. Like, it's like the storm have, have, and that one research vessel. I can't think of its name right. They've, now. they've started buying here because they're used to bringing a truck in. Yeah, they they the storm has purchased from us and that one how much catamaran yeah do we i mean is it a pretty substantial amount uh the two months i was there i think they got fuel twice yeah, that's quite and then how much and that'd be and, a, and approximately how much on a fill uh they were about i mean 600 a time i think when they were here 1200 gallon 1200 gallon or 1200 dollars oh that's not all that much so what are you made of well, hundred bucks. What? Dollar. What did we make on a twelve hundred dollar bill? Less than a dollar a gallon. Less than a dollar a gallon. Yeah. So, I I don't know. I guess that. I would say. Uh, I don't care. Fine. Yeah, sure. I mean, we're <laughs> we'll fuel the Harrisville. I would. Yeah. Say, they're bluff. Yeah, really? I would say yeah. do all their efforts. Um, city fire, city police, sheriff's department, and the rest of them pay. Yeah. State police can pay. DNR can pay. State police aren't are there. State police don't have a boat there. It's the sheriff and the DNR, and and kind of intermittently. State does not has not had one there when I was there. Coast Guard was the other one. Okay. I don't know if they pay dockage when they launch. I mean, theoretically. I guess I, I kind of agree with that too. I mean, I. The so city's marine. experience with the other county facilities and and school research entities it's typically i mean yeah kids are a researcher good. from a university and you call up the harbor master like oh no worries your research is free it, yes it's that's very great it's usually puts a smile on the dso's uh, face but i mean no one's going to be like oh shoot we got to pay let's go up to presqueil and drive the nine hours to get back in and do the research so researching. right <laughs> And I mean, if they and if they really feel, if anybody feels really strongly about that, if University of Michigan or whoever was feeling really strongly about that and was doing something with NOAA, then they could talk to NOAA about docking with them, mm -hmm. and and they could coordinate all the bridges. And, I mean, if that's really what they want to do. Gail on a mile. Theoretically, <laughs> that's my initial. I mean, but I guess the thing too is for you. I mean, do you want more flexibility with that than like a more well, like what we're talking kind of this like. Keeps I want us I want us to be covered I don't want to and it's we're dealing with public dollars now at this point in time yeah. I want a procedure yeah I want a procedure where we can say this is our procedure yeah you can fall back on the paperwork on it yeah. right you know that and that's why I want you guys to be comfortable with this because that's that's where I'm at with it is I'm giving away public dollars by comping votes <laughs> yeah you are so I think that but right, Don says, you know, give the sheriff boat a pass. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, the youth group, which is a Sea Scouts, they'll yep. do sweat equity. Yep. Everybody else pays. Is that what you said? And, the, and we said the fire. Fire and the city, I think, both have small boats. Oh, yeah. The, they're they're not in there. In they're in there. In that way. They, use that, um, they use that beautiful pontoon down there that I have access to through our lift contract. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess my opinion, too, is if, yeah. if anyone's going to put up a real stink about it, they then. Feel it. It's kind of like kind of what you were saying too. What Jeremy was saying is like, okay, well, it, you using our docks cost wear and tear, and therefore eventually money on our docks. Mm -hmm. And so your money, like you want to talk about, well, oh, okay, well you buy gas, great, we made 120 bucks. You pay a slip, we now got a thousand dollars of what we're supposed to be getting. Mm -hmm. Now we can make still better docks for you. Your researchers are just gonna like these docks a lot better. And if it's that big of a deal, like for our law enforcement, we could always eventually turn that courtesy dock into something else because of this extra fund we get exactly you know and unless the dnr comes and goes oh, this is really going to hurt us what if we i don't know did more drone footage or i don't know yeah did some kind of like hey we could bring a service to you to kind of offset that trade if that's allowed or legal then by all means but right and that's what i you know i've always kind of said is if if we can get our our money back out of it somehow yeah I, I can justify some of this comping, but 
us not getting anything out of it is kind of is hurting our budget severely. So. So does the storm use power? They're plugged in. Yeah. They're plugged. I think in. they're just keeping their batteries full though. Mm-hmm. So they barely took it out. Obviously. But they still use the dock hands, you know. Yeah, they still use all the services. They're always in the way when we're trying to launch our hangar. <laughs> <laughs> so is that a motion, John? I mean, do you want them? I mean, do you guys want one more month to look at this and we can bring it back next month and make a vote at that point in time? I will so type something up as the exact motion would be. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. That's fine. Mike. Let's do and that's why I want I wanted you guys to take another look at it. I wanted to report this back to you. You guys have kind of said what we're, we're looking at. I'll do a final version of it and then we will go ahead and. Voter. Are you hoping between now and the motion to approve that potential final statement? Are you hoping to reach out to some of the organization and go, hey, this is on the block. If you have a strong opinion about it, you can come to the meeting and express your viewpoint. We can do that. Because I, I also, to be really kind of mean, if it's really that big of a freaking deal to them, mm -hmm. it's a public meeting. They can come to it and go, hey, this is a big deal and they can make the case and I'm more than willing to hear it. Mm -hmm. No, and that's that's absolutely doable. We can, you know, ask them if at the next meeting we're going to address this. I'll actually send them a copy of the policy, okay. and and um, invite them. Yeah, they can virtually tune in and just say, "Hey, mm -hmm. this is our opinion." Okay. Should encourage them to come personally. Then they'd really, yeah, that makes there's then it would to me would make them really interested. Yeah, give them a tour of the facilities. Yeah. Good thing to come in here, sit right there. This wallpaper was built in 1990. <laughs> so we know joking about our wallpaper. Classic. <laughs> so is that enough? That's enough for that one. Okay. Okay. Um, next thing is the standard operating procedure for what do I call that? Harbor Advisory Committee membership and procedures. Procedures. Um, I attached two other uh, committees mm -hmm. procedures in there. Um, looking for you guys, you kind of read through them. You see what we're going to need for ours. Is there anything that you guys are concerned about what you read in those as far as procedures, everything else? I thought it was okay. I think it would be if you want to have a, a draft copy of something for us to mm -hmm. look at what might be a good place to start i think no and that's fine but i wanted you guys to take a look at what you have these are the general layouts that you guys are seeing on them i didn't know if you wanted a motion today on that no. nope i don't need a motion on that today i just wanted to see if there was anything in there that you guys were concerned about as far as us following along those same lines is there one is there one the dda or the plan which is the one that you would think is the more Probably going to lean towards Planning Commission. DDA is its own kind of special. <laughs> special board. It's all it's all, its own kind of special. So. so the Planning Commission has power. We have none. Yes. Uh, the plan, <laughs> change that in the bylaw. <laughs> I think you can do that, right? We're advisory. You're, and that's just it. You guys are advising, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. yeah, there is some power. Yeah. Power. yeah. yeah. <laughs> We can make them. They might say no, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's advisory. <laughs> that's what I wanted to find out from you guys. Is there anything in any of those sections there that you're just like, yeah, no, we don't need this for our committee. We don't want to abide by that. You no know, real committees. I mean, all yeah. committees would be ad hoc, yeah. mm -hmm. as needed, or whatever. Yeah. Right. Probably the biggest thing is the chair doesn't really run the meeting. Yeah, I don't know if that's that's. Re that's required or not. Usually that chair runs it. If you want the chair to run it, we should put that in there. Well, and that's, you know, that's, I just want to make certain. Uh, my thought on that is it's probably appropriate. Mm -hmm. So it's probably yeah. in there. Okay. So the chair should run the meeting. The chair should run the meeting. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'll give you my Rob Roberts announcement. Yeah, right. Yeah. As close as I can tell, we don't have a chair. 
<laughs> well, I do. I was that before, but that was because I showed up at an election. In <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's no matter me. In me. I think they said there was a vote. I don't know what vote there was. Hey, you missed that meeting. <laughs> yeah. No, I was 10 minutes late. <laughs> and I missed the meeting on the vote. Yeah. yeah. What will happen is we'll get it all wrote up at that point in time. We'll. Um, Get it approved. Once we get it approved, we'll have to have an election of officers. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can do it in such a way because I run it right now. We can continue that. It's just wrote into the bylaws that I run the meeting in, instead of the chair or whatever. But whatever you want to do, folks. Um, I'm your committee. I mean, with ours, the secretary thing wouldn't. Duties of the secretary would not. I, okay. That'll, there's um, in the planning commission. It says there's a staff member that takes care of that. Oh, okay. That's a great awesome. job. Yeah. I was a secretary on a planning commission for years. Yeah. Okay. All I had to do was sign. Oh, All you had to do was sign. <laughs> Cassie, Cassie brought you the yeah. notes. <laughs> Cassie brought you the notes. You signed them. So you guys don't have, they have any issues with any of those things being in the next one? Yeah, I'm not saying. Okay. No, because then if both of the chairman and vice chairman are going, they just you just vote on somebody during that meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so. Perfect. So I'll get you one of those ready. Okay. The deaf and the incapacity. Uh, critical issues, progress report. We've been working on the store. Uh, a couple of you have been in and seen what we've been working on. Um, but the wind doesn't blow through it anymore at winter. That's good. Put plastic up. No, we um actually <laughs> um John Nye um was down there and he is. They, I think there's more chinking patch on the walls than there is like old mortar left now. <laughs> but he has sealed all that up. The guys have been working on digging the caulk off the windows and getting them recocked. We've been, we're going to get a price. I hate to put too much money into it because if we get that grant, I'm getting new windows. Yeah. Right. So the guys are trying to skinny through with what we've got right now because I don't want to put a bunch of money into it just to turn around and tear the windows out in a year or whatever, the summer or whatever. So, um, gonna hopefully see some paint on the walls uh my crew gets pulled when there's snow so they've been gone for the last few days so um invite you guys to go down take a look inside see what's going on and how we did it um got rid of a lot of just stuff that was on the walls and it's helped helped open it up brighten it up uh what was sherry's office is gone um, we pulled that right out of there, just in and opened the whole building up. Because oh. It's bright, it's seeable. Jeremy was there. It's big. So um, we still have. So my understanding of the, the marina store is that the reason it was bi leveled like that is because it had a tendency to flood. Yeah. Does it, I mean, does it still do that, or would it start? Yes. Well, it would. Only when the water's high and when it rains. Okay. And I think we're is that back floor. Is that a well? No, I think we're beyond that. Back floor is that an overflowing downwards? Is that coming through a system and it's overflowing up, or is it like? It comes in the walls. It comes. In, yeah. Part of the, yeah. That's, I've just never seen it. Finding its way in. It's not preventable. It's. Uh, it just happened. Okay. Yeah, no, no, there wasn't any way to stop it. Okay. What we're gonna do long term, if everything stays the way it is is that floor will get busted out here hopefully in about three years yeah and we're going to bring it up to door level yeah and put new concrete in there so far down into the i know that's the yeah. thing yeah that's so that that will happen long term um it's not gonna uh i i don't the cip i think you guys looked in there there was a lot of just projects that i'm trying to get yeah. through it or whatever to just get us back to the point where we're livable yeah if i can get the siding on the outside that would help a lot you know so that all goes back to everybody cross your fingers for the grants <laughs> so i mean that that's what's going on there um we'll probably see bills going out 
the first of February because by the end of February, if you're going to have a slip, you need to have that hundred dollar deposit coming in. Um, my intern today typed up all the names and addresses into an Excel spreadsheet so we can do a mail merge awesome. um, with those and try to get that all out here. So probably seeing in February that you'll see those bills coming out. Um, other than that, just like I said, just plucking along as we've got time and people available. Sean from DPW has been borrowing me guys as he's got people available. Sometimes during the winter, they've got some downtime. I've had John and I, I think for two weeks already, <clears throat> fixing walls and stuff like that, um, demoing, things like that trying to get that finished up enough that I can get some pictures and then uh, later this month send out the request for tenants basically to get the marina store and the marina shop back occupied and then see if we can't get one or two what we consider micro businesses or small businesses that want to go in there just for some frontage or whatever. Has there been any interest of the store? I haven't heard a lot of interest in the store. I am going to reach out. I'm, I'm going to shoot for the moon here. I'm going to send it to West Marine and Irish and all of them. Are you talking about, I mean, of course, the other the other building would be a lot small. I mean, that wouldn't even be that big. Mm -hmm. Probably the floor space is probably not even usable over there. Right. They're going to be in. The, they're not going to be at the boaters' lounge. We're going to be. We're going to put them into that store. Um, right now, the the intent is to keep them there, and hopefully, we can get somebody. I'm going to talk to the people from West Marine because how many times do you go in and you got to order parts and you try to figure out? Well, if you're in West Marine in Saginaw, yeah, Bay City. Bay City. Yeah, well, and, Petoskey has one too. Right. If you're in either one of those, your next possible stop could be Alpena. So pick it up in Alpena when you get there. You know, we'll ship it to Alpena. Pick it up when you get there. Um, Alstrom's in Mackinac City and Sheboygan both. Yes. Yeah. And I'm going to send them. So I would wonder if they would be interested because it's just sort of floor print, the right size for what they considered. Like, is it too small? Is it right on the number? I mean, how flexible are those entities with size of building? Or would they come and be like, hey, we need another Wallstrom's? Is Petoskey's not huge. Not huge. Not, okay. I just was but, wondering if they'd come in and be like, this is way too yeah, small. Yeah, but for us. The, only, the only problem you got with those, because there's two of the companies I work for deal, they won't even go to Petoskey uh, because of the size of it. What I'm saying is that, you know, that kind of stuff where yeah. we've got to service it. But they still have one. Okay. Okay. So, the, and they can still order, you can still order all the West Marine stuff and have it shipped there. Mm -hmm. It might not be in stock there, but yeah. it comes there. Yeah. Okay. And it's free. I mean, you know, free. Yeah, to ship within the store. Free. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess that's, you know, I'm going to shoot, like I said, I'm going to shoot for the moon for this because, you know, why can't we have a nice store just like everybody else? Right for it, yeah. And I also, Cassie has put together the list of just the locals because maybe they want to open a satellite or something. That's what would be the next thing would be a satellite. I mean, even... Somebody else? You know, I mean, even some, you know, I'm not... I mean, I'm sure Nate doesn't want to come here, but something like the boathouse, not, you know, not necessarily them, but somebody that... Might be looking... He might. Yeah. He's, he just mentioned to me that he's running out of space, so... Yeah, maybe he. Yeah, I know he is. He looks but, like starting to look like the marina now. <laughs> that's that's just well, you know we've got cells inside. Well, I'm just saying. What happened to all the yeah. merchants? Well, that's what yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, uh, What happened? What did happen to all the merchants? Like merchandise in the store because that was all he liquidated he liquidated a lot of it okay and um what wasn't liquidated he boxed up and took home or is still in the shop area so. okay um there's a couple of parts there's a lot of parts still left in in the shop area that he needs to he said he's going to come in the spring and take care of so um still long term hoping to heat the shop so that um a certain pair of mechanics have indicated to me that if it was heated they would possibly be able to work year round in it so Other than that, is there any other critical issues you guys want 
to look at or address or talk about? I had a question about the bubblers there. Yes. Like why they're on and nobody's in there. <laughs> in the bubblers? Yeah, and then the marina. Is that just for the docks? That's just for those docks. That's how we save those docks. They're, those run year are year round once we get ice. Um, those docks are fragile enough at this point in time that they can't take the ice push on them at all. So that's why the bubblers run year round. With the potential of the new of, with the potential of the new docks in the future, would the bubblers be seen as an outdated system, or would we be keeping a system? Would we be keeping the bubblers in because we'd be bringing in a docking system? I know this is really like far in the future question, but like we're we actually have upgraded some of the equipment on the bubbler system last year. The pump went bad. The pump and motor went bad last year. We are waiting for some utility bills this year. We've talked about actually, as opposed to pulling those docks, like we do on the Prentice Street side, actually running the bubblers all the way around there. On oh, the whole loop. On the whole loop. Right now, that's another critical issue, is we got a pretty big expense coming up. The transient docks are sliding off their receiver. So Lewandowski has got to come. We've got to pick that dock system up, slide, off either six by sixes or C channel or something underneath of it right now and um, support that so we don't lose all the utilities because if it slides off, it'll crush the gas and the water and everything else. We'll end up having to repair all that in the spring. So we're trying to get something to support all that up and take care of that. One thought is eventually we'd like to bubble that in the spring just so we don't have that ongoing issue. Yeah, because I don't think there's a marina north of Bay City that doesn't have buzzword systems, even with the floaters. Right. A lot of them have them on their floaters. You know, Presqueel and us, you know, there's a whole bunch that they've got to have bubbles somewhere. Yeah. Because, I mean, uh, in theory. Just because it's a floater doesn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in theory, just because I'm still thinking about the California brain, if, if in the future we did have bubblers, then in theory, some boats could potentially stay in the water. I mean, there wouldn't be. I mean, I don't know truly winter, but I mean, if if we had bubblers through the whole system, I would systems not be super comfortable flying to do that because if they fail below zero, yeah, the bubbler stops, then you're trouble. Yeah, uh, I don't know, kind of low liability. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and people think are going to want to rubber left their boat, their boat and, probably yeah, would get costly. I mean, I almost had that bubbler <laughs> <laughs> over the years. Yeah. Yeah, enough. Yeah. No, and that's I'm thinking. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking of no, another, because, I mean, I could see if someone was like, "Hey, instead of dry, hard docking, you know, for a little bit extra, you could keep your boat in the water." And that's you know, and you don't have to pay the haul out fee. You don't have to storm in the parking lot, and then people can that want to be so, on the water can go on. Around. It's expensive to run that. I agree. Bubbler. The bubblers cost me about sixteen hundred to two thousand dollars a month. And on the Detroit River. Is there any way in the future? Not to sorry, I, sorry if I'm getting hung up on this one, but is there any way in the future with planning to try to consider renewable energy sources in house that would like facilitate the like the lightning mill is what I thought instantly. <laughs> with like, yeah, but I mean, it's then it's an eyesore possibly. Or True. Yeah. Not, may may not like that, but one of the one of the or the break wall. Have plenty of that. <laughs> one of the long term goals I do have is try to put geothermal into that area um, to heat the shop and to cool the shop and stuff like that. Um, we're in a unique situation there where I've got lots of room to put the loops horizontal as opposed to vertical and with the water table as high as it is geothermal is an option geothermal will not run the bubblers it, yeah. it's a they're electric motors i don't have this side of solar and we don't get enough sun this time of year so are we I'm just wondering if a windmill would run the pump though almost where if it was windy enough you would eliminate the electricity and just actually run Never thought of that one. Yeah, but, be off, I don't think so. I don't, we don't have enough wind here. That's why there are no windmills here. Right. Right. Well, yeah, the, they've already done all. Yeah, they've done all the studies. So. Yeah. Yeah. Go um, to the thumb and think. You know, that one, we'll, we'll go there. I've been involved. Yeah. No. <laughs> but enough. They uh, track the wind at, at your city for like five years. Yeah. We are looking at a couple other options. Um, yeah. 
there's some portions of the sewage plant that generate that was my next question yep that generate um methane and stuff like that so and there's oh, things that they have <laughs> mm -hmm. so i mean we're, we're we do we we are looking at different options and stuff like that so i mean it's it's not like i i want to pay this bill yeah the, the second thing is is we got a more efficient motor here so it'll be interesting to see what that power bill is this winter um i think somebody told me once and I, I can't separate the numbers well enough on our on our sheets when they come in but i think that system cost me like eight thousand dollars to run wow for the winter yeah yeah my That's utility cool. bills i don't know if i ever told you this my utility bills are like forty thousand dollars at the marina for the year we're not i guess that would that's be. why we're talking about like the fish going you know i mean i i agree that's like mm -hmm. i mean i get hit up all the time but they ought to pay for cleaning fish i don't want to be the bad guy saying hey we should do that but yeah i use it but it's an expense it is it's a, it's a huge expense and you know that's meter changing and stuff like that those are all things that i've done you know i, I saved us four thousand dollars on the water bill by doing it and things like that so i'm we're doing everything we can to try to get the utilities down and better i think that the flow my, is out of the river this analysis so like before we didn't have the information to make yeah. these judgments mm -hmm. and now you have some more statistics we got, more yeah. financial statistics on what right. stuff costs and you can make right. a better judgment on right. Right. out of the river right. like on average well and like we said you know if we could get rid of the bubblers, that'd be really awesome. But in exchange for that, it's the reefing on the docks that you're seeing and stuff like that. So right. or the other. And plus the city took it over, so everything's gonna be set comfortable, even if it was <laughs> well, I mean that's what I'm just saying that's what I'm certain that's what everybody is saying yeah. is that's what's yep. gonna happen. Right. That woman down there is raising everything. Cutting <laughs> <laughs> all the trees down, yep. I even stick up for you, Shannon. I'm I know. Right. Anything, <laughs> anything else? Critical to... issues that you guys are worried about? Uh, I have uh, nothing. Um, any public comment? No public. Any member comment? You're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did have um. Ryan? So owns the wikis yep because i had talked to him i had talked to his wife originally because it's hey if you're ever interested in the act like you you should send us up um send us something in and then she actually directed me to her husband he said if we ever did a work bee like on the boulders lounge or stuff like that he'd be willing to like I, it sounded like he said like he was willing to donate the no wiki food truck to feed the feed the masses okay so just something yeah, out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. nothing gets the community going like a free sausage, yeah. right? Me <laughs> and all you can eat. They will get sausage and sauerkraut. Right. <laughs> You're supposed to bring meat trays every time. You know, just tell Brian to donuts from now on. Yeah, yeah, tell Brian to get off his stuff and give you. Better go early. It like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, staff comment. Wow. Everyone's ready to go. Everybody's ready to go. I, you guys seen the videos that we got from the DNR? Yep. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. Very nice. During our regatta. I know. <laughs> that's what I was looking at. Going, oh, we got yinglings. <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> we got lots of yinglings. So they, those showed up the other day. We got those from courtesy of the state of Michigan for, um, because they were flying their marinas. They came over, um, DNR flight came over and did ours too. Um, I have a m called in to Mary Beth. We are going to try to get together here shortly and get a promotional campaign started for the marina. Try to start selling ourselves more out there and getting people involved and in here so that your guys' rates don't have to go up. <laughs> Is oh, I got we go back to member comments a second. Sure. Um, the lights at the entrance to the marina it just jumped in my head. Those navigation lights, you yes. guys are out. I mean, it doesn't matter now, but out again. Up and on. Not, I don't know that that they worked much all summer, did they? Yeah. No. You know which ones I'm talking about? Yeah, the I know which ones you're talking about. I know when you're Bay Electric was working on them and they had them working at one point in time, but they're out again. 
Okay, just make sure they're on the list. That's kind of a critical item. Yep. On the bridge? Or it's uh, bridge. when you go in, you turn that left into the marina. Oh, yeah. Right yeah. Right yeah. On there, yeah, yeah right by the... Yeah. Are both of them out again? I think both were out. Okay. Didn't we have that issue with that one guy that was on the yacht, and he said, like, oh, I missed the mouth of the marina because the lights weren't going? I thought it's something. They might have, and that's... We've been... We've been fighting gremlins out there. Out here, there's no moon. It's it's dark, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was 70 miles. And if the lights weren't on on the boat, yeah, the docks, you would just yeah, you end up in Partridge Point. There, <laughs> there are so many lights when you come in there. It's hard to. Yeah, it's not easy. I mean, you're uh, looking you know. for greens and reds, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I actually have the um, specs ready to get the bollards put out on the walkway so that. That's in the process. I've sent that to the attorney for his review, so we can go ahead and bid that. Okay. Um, hopefully that'll go out next week. I'm gonna get those prices back so I can go to one of the meetings in February. In February, um, Rachel has asked me to go to council and give them a six month update on the Harbor. Mm -hmm. So that'll be coming up. You might hear about us in the paper again from that. Okay. Other than that, I don't have anything else. Does anybody else have any other comments? Make a motion. Next meeting will be February 3rd. Hopefully by then the master plan is, is ready for us to review it. Um, we have to go through three sets of meetings and I'm hoping that maybe when we go for our, we're gonna go for our um, six month review with council that at the same time I can be presenting the master plan to them. And we can make some decisions from that. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. We are done. Thank you. Good meeting.